Back in 2020, it was announced that researchers managed to create actual living robots from biological material that could be programmed to do whatever the researchers wanted. They were hailed due to their advantages compared to their mechanical counterparts in terms of not requiring any kind of batteries and them simply being 10 times stronger. How the new Xenobots compare to the old ones and what crazy things they will be able to accomplish, all in this one video. So-called Xenobots have been created in labs back in 2020 from frog stem cells in order to deliver medical payloads inside the human circulatory system, clean up dirty arteries or even help us rid the ocean from plastics when produced in high droves and put into the ocean. They can even exhibit collective behavior in the presence of a swarm of other Xenobots and thus move and act as some sort of single being. This new invention has been considered a revolutionary paradigm shift at the time. But what if I told you, that just one year later, they managed to completely redefine the process and invented a new kind of Xenobot? The same team that produced the previous life forms has now created life forms that self-assemble a body from single cells, travel without the use of muscle cells, and also show the capacity to store memories. As if they were true living creatures. The new generation Xenobots are also able to move faster, navigate in diverse environments, and have longer lifespans than the first edition, and they still have the ability to work together in groups and heal themselves if damaged. The results of the new research were published in a paper just last month in April. Comparatively the previous iteration of the Xenobots, the millimeter-sized biological robots were created in a top-down method by manually placing surgical shaping and tissue of frog skin and cardiac cells to generate movement. The latest version of was actually designed by an artificial intelligence machine learning algorithm that created their blueprints. The new Xenobots comes with a bottom-up process. The biologists at Tufts exerted stem cells from eggs of the African frog Xenopus laevis. Which is why these robots are called Xenobots. These cells allow them to self-assemble and develop into spheroids, where few cells after some days adapted to generate cilia, tiny hair-like projections that move back and forth or revolve in a particular direction. The new Xenobots also seem to be both faster and more efficient at tasks like garbage disposal than the previous one, cooperating in a pack to scrub a petri dish and capture large piles of plastic particles. They can also travel through narrow spots or cover large flat surfaces. These researchers also recommend that the in silico simulations could in the future optimize new aspects of biological bots for more complicated operations. One major highlight added in the Xenobot upgrade is the capability to record data into their memory. And due to their collective behavior, this memory can also be shared between a pact of them. Xenobots don't look like traditional robots since they have no shiny gears or robotic arms. Instead, they look more like a tiny blob of moving pink flesh. And this is a very deliberate decision made by the researchers. This biological machine can achieve things typical robots of steel and plastic cannot. Traditional robots, degrade over time and can produce harmful ecological and health side effects, the researchers have discovered in a paper which was published last month in the National Academy of Sciences. As biological machines, xenobots are much more environmentally friendly and safer for human health, the study said. The latest xenobots were also exceptionally proficient at healing and would close the majority of a severe full-length damage half their thickness within five minutes of the injury. All damaged bots were able to eventually heal the injury, restore their shape and resume their job as before. Unlike plastic and metal robots, the cells in a biological bot can consume and break down chemicals and work like small factories secreting and synthesizing proteins and chemicals. The entire field of synthetic biology, which has mainly concentrated on reprogramming single-celled organisms to create useful molecules, can now be employed in multicellular organisms. Like the first Xenobots, the enhanced bots can endure up to 10 days on their embryonic energy stores and manage their responsibilities without supplementary energy sources. However, they can also carry on at an adequate rate for several months if kept in a soup of nutrients. The scientists tested the memory function by releasing 10 Xenobots to float around a surface of water on which one point is lighted with a beam of light. After two hours, they noticed that three bots show red light. The rest showing their original green light, efficiently storing the travel experience of the bots. After now having realized the enormous future for this technology, 
The University of Vermont and Tufts University have set up the Institute for Computer Designed Organisms, to be formally started in the upcoming months, which will collectively pull resources from each university and outside sources to build living robots with frequently complex skills. A big advantage compared to the traditional, mechanical technologies, xenobots do not add additional pollution as they work and degrade. They behave using energy from fat and protein naturally stored in their tissue, which lasts about a week, at which point they simply turn into dead skin cells. In future clinical applications, such as targeted drug delivery, xenobots could be made from a human patient's own cells, which would bypass the immune response challenges of other kinds of micro-robotic delivery systems. Such xenobots could potentially be used to scrape plaque from arteries, and with additional cell types and bioengineering, locate and treat disease. Aside from these immediate practical tasks, the xenobots could also help researchers learn more about cell biology and opening the doors to future advancement in human health and human longevity. If we could make 3D biological form on demand, we could repair birth defects, reprogram tumors into normal tissue, regenerate after traumatic injury or degenerative disease, and defeat aging. This research could have a massive impact on regenerative medicine in terms of building body parts and inducing regeneration. It may all sound like something from a dystopian sci-fi movie, but the researchers say there is no need for alarm. The organisms come pre-loaded with their own food source of lipid and protein deposits but they are completely unable to reproduce or evolve on their own accord. And although the supercomputer, which is a powerful piece of artificial intelligence plays a big role in building these robots, it's unlikely that the AI could have evil intentions. At the moment though it is actually quite difficult to see how an AI could create harmful organisms any easier than a talented biologist with bad intentions could in my honest opinion. Of course researchers still need to learn about how to use the potential of these tiny robots before any real procedures to extend the capabilities of humans can be performed. Even if we were able to control these xenobots at absolute precision, which we currently are not able to do, but that is a field at which thousands of researchers are looking at currently. Whether it's for delivering nanobots to someone's brain for enabling high bandwidth brain computer interfaces, or people modifying human cells to extend someone's longevity. So what is your opinion on this topic? Do you think these biological robots are going to take the lead in terms of being used in the medical field compared to their mechanical siblings? Please tell us in the comments below. Maybe you can think of some more use cases for them. I'd love to hear about it. And you can see this amazing plasticity. So this is, this is um, not only for making useful machines, you can imagine uh, now programming these to go out into the environment and collect toxins and clean up, or you can imagine ones made out of human cells that would go through your body and collect cancer cells or um, uh, reshape arthritic joints and you know, deliver uh, pro-regenerative compounds, all kinds of things. But not only these useful applications, this is an amazing sandbox for learning to communicate morphogenetic signals to cell collectives. So once we crack this, once we understand how these cells decide what to do, and then we're going to, of course, learn to rewrite that information. The next steps are uh, a, a, a great, um, uh, great improvements in regenerative medicine because we will then be able to tell cells to build healthy organs. And so this is now a really critical opportunity to learn to communicate with cell groups, not to micromanage them, not to force the hardware, but to communicate um, and rewrite the goals that these cells are trying to accomplish. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.